Hey everyone, in front of me is a board that I use when teaching some corporate classes at a few restaurants that we service. We have a few controls on here and we're going to be briefly speaking about one of the controls and why the other controls are on this board as well. So let's go ahead and get started and let's figure out what is what. A lot of the managers, um, especially in corporate entities, they move around a lot, right? And because they're moving from here to there, um, it really gives them the opportunity and everything to be familiar with the controls that they're going to run out, uh, run into out in the field. Um, the one control that we're going to be talking about in particular is going to be this one right here in the middle, which is the pen A421. Now this control, I've seen it at a number of stores. Um, a lot of service companies do stock this on their truck. We actually don't. We've kind of moved away from all of these controls except for this one right here, which you'll find on turbo coil controls. That one right there fits in their unit right inside the uh, evaporator compartment. So <clears throat> it works well with you know, their equipment and everything. So we try to stick with, if it does come OEM, we do, do try to stick with that. Uh, but if we do run into a control that let's say is remoted on the outside of the cooler or just hooked up to a solenoid valve that's mounted to the wall, uh, we'll definitely replace it if it is bad, obviously, uh, with a different type of control. Now, this pen A421 right here, I just wanna go briefly over some of the settings here. Now this control, we're gonna be specifically utilizing settings that would be for a refrigeration piece of equipment. Um, you can use it for a walk-in freezer, you can use it in a heating mode or in cooling mode. So it really depends on your application, but for this video's sake, it's gonna be strictly refrigeration. Now, when we cycle through these settings right here, you can kind of see right here, let's see. We're gonna come on to the off position. So what this is pretty much indicating, I mean, it's pretty simple too. So what this is indicating, it's like, all right, well, what temperature do we want the unit to turn off at, right? So it's set at 67 right now, but let's go ahead and set this thing down to the correct temperature range, which is typically 35 degrees. So in California, the temperature range that at least the health department is concerned about is making sure that, hey, it's within 35 degrees and 41 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? So you can come over here, you press menu one more time, it's gonna lock that in. Now it's, we're gonna look at, hey, what time, or excuse me, what temperature do we want this control to turn on at? So we click it one more time. Right now it's set to 70, so let's get it down to, we're just gonna set it down to 41 for this example's sake. All right, now, once we do this, you're actually gonna hear the um, relay click over. Okay, and what that did is it actually turned on the light over here. Now you can kind of see, or it gives at least uh, in the classroom setting, right? If you're coming over here messing around with stuff, it just helps you understand, all right, hey, when this, when we do this, uh, change out these settings right here, it's going to do this, okay? And obviously, if you go around and, you know, change, alter the settings to, let's say, a higher setting, we'll actually be able to turn that light off. Okay, so I, I also want to go through, so there's the off, set at 35, the on, set at 41, okay? Now the SF setting is for the sensor failure, okay? So what happens if the sensor right here happens to go bad? Now, the sensor right here has a little uh, stainless steel bulb on it. Uh, they do last, an issue that does end up happening though is that when you put them in wet conditions, depending on the direction that you actually mount this bulb, water can actually get in here and it messes up the sensor, could potentially make it go bad, okay? So when we come back over here and we hit the, uh, get to the SF setting, it's either gonna go to one, which is the default setting, okay? Now what that one means is that the relay on the inside is gonna stay on. 
So if something happened to the sensor, if there was a broken wire or anything like that, in the one position, this light will stay on or the solenoid will stay activated or the compressor will stay activated. But in a refrigeration setting, what that means is you have a potential of icing over that coil, okay? Now, what you can do to offset that is change it to zero. What that'll do is if anything happened to this, it's gonna cut the control out. For me personally, as a service technician, I would rather have somebody notice that the box is running warm as opposed to the coil icing over, right? Coil ice is over, and then typically people don't find it in time. And it'll actually ice so much to where it can move up to the fan and take out the fan as well. So what we want to do is eliminate those possibilities, right? Um, in a restaurant, there's a lot of employees and you would hope that your employees are on your side as far as keeping an eye on what's going on with the equipment. Um, if that's the case at your restaurant, then you'll be able to find it right away. Because one of the things you need to remember is that when a system is running, if there's anything that's going on with it, as far as let's say, hey, it's starting to run warm, give it to about 30 minutes, okay? That's to say if there was a defrost clock, right, which is right here, um, that wasn't located near the control, maybe it's up in up on the roof with a condensing unit, right? After that 30 minute time frame, if you don't see it coming back down, then hey, there's an issue that's going on. Now with this control right here, if that sensor does go bad, it'll actually put up an alarm up here, right? It'll say SF flash like this, um, or it'll say OP. Okay, indicating that there's an issue with this sensor and it needs to get replaced. So another setting that's on here is the ASD, which is the anti-short cycle delay. Now what this does is it's in minute increments, okay? So let's say we set this up to one minute. Now what it's gonna do is, after the control is calling for a cooling cycle, it's gonna wait one minute before it actually activates that solenoid, okay? Now what this does is it kind of offsets any ice buildup or anything like that. Um, it can help with uh, avoiding iced over coils and such, uh, but you gotta remember every application is different, right? So even though we set this control right here to 35 and 41, those are just the general temperature, or excuse me, that's just the general temperature range in which this refrigeration equipment needs to be running, okay? Now, you might need to go and change some of the settings at your particular restaurant uh, or for your application. Now, what I would recommend is starting with that range right there and test the food, okay? And typically what I want to keep it at as far as a range is in between, let's say about 35 and 38 is where I want that food temperature. If it starts going up above that, then we risk um, having the health department come in and dinging a restaurant, you know, let's say if it's at 41 or 42, right? Some people have good relationships with the inspectors, others not so much. Um, if you have a good relationship with your health inspector, then hey, they might let it slide. But what that does is give you some time to get the um, the issue fixed. Now, the other thing that we want to try to avoid is allowing people to come in here and mess with it. So what's typically gonna end up happening is the unit starts running warm, right? Um, for people who are not familiar with how these controls work, this literally only controls it from turning on and off. Okay, on and off at a certain temperature. What ends up happening is that an employee or a lead or a manager will go in and say, hey, you know what, it's not cold enough. It's running at 43 or something, right? And what they decide to do is change it from, let's say 35 degrees, and we're just gonna bump this down to 28 degrees. You know, let's get it to cool faster. What ends up happening at that point, now you end up icing over coils, and then you have a bigger issue in the long run. So before you do any of that, Check the settings. They need to be within the 35 and 41 degree range. 
if they are in that range, then there might be something else going on with the system. Now, at that point, it's kind of out of your control. You want to have a professional come down and check it out. Your system might be low on charge. You might have an issue with the TXV. There's a fan motor that might be out. And at that point, you want somebody who has a little bit more experience and can get this system back up and running as soon as possible. Um, now, as far as us and myself, you know, this control is perfectly fine. I don't have any issues with it. I just don't stock it on my truck. It's on this board because a lot of my customers do have this. Now, when we do run into an issue when this control is going out, sometimes what ends up happening is during the install, somebody will install it under a suction line or a drain line or something like that, and it'll short out the control, right? At that point, we would uh, relocate the control and actually change it out from this, con change out this control and upgrade it to a way better control. I'm actually gonna have a video on that control. Um, it's not on here right now because typically we actually use it, uh, we use the in-store um, models, right? So we already have some, you know, we've already replaced some of these controls and we have those controls already in the store. So when we go into these classes for some of the customers, they have them and we can actually have them, you know, mess around with it uh, if they want to. But for me personally, this other control, way better. And um, once I do get a video, I'll definitely put a link on the bottom so you guys can check it out. I'll be talking probably in the next couple of weeks maybe um, about some of these old school mechanical clocks, uh, the Corel digital controllers, the Ranco. Um, I mean, you gotta remember, there's not anything wrong with these controls, right? Uh, they get the job done, they've been around. I work for a company that that's all we stocked were the Rancos. Um, we also had the pens on there as well. Um, and obviously we kept the Corels in stock, you know, but times have changed. And when something bigger and better comes out, you need to adapt as soon as possible, especially with technology, the way that it's going. All right, if anybody has any questions, um, you can leave it in a comment. Um, you know, obviously this was just a basic overview. Keep this control for refrigeration, right? In between 35 and 41 degrees, but be mindful that every application is different. All right, thank you.